steam h2o uh, reacts with hot carbon at 1000 degrees celsius according to the following balance equation and uh, there we have it initially 36 grams of steam and a certain amount of carbon were placed in a two decimeter cube sealed container and allowed to react at equilibrium it was found that the amount of carbon changed by 0.225 moles and then 6.1 says uh, define the term dynamic equilibrium and uh, then dynamic equilibrium is the same as um, chemical equilibrium uh, is the stage in a chemical reaction when the rate of forward reaction equals the rate of reverse reaction uh, then 6.2 6.2 says calculate the equilibrium constant kc for the reaction at 1000 degrees celsius so again like we did on the other video if you haven't watched it subscribe to the channel and go check it out so we're going to start by writing the equation down we have two uh h2o uh plus carbon in solid form uh, which is giving us uh two uh h2 uh, plus co2 so we're going to draw the table i did on the other video please 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 if you haven't watched it please go watch it so we have um h2o uh, we have the carbon uh, we have uh, the hydrogen and we have the carbon dioxide so what we're gonna have first is uh, the initial uh, number of moles right and then after uh, we have the initial number of moles uh, we're gonna have uh, the change in the number of moles after the change in the number of moles we're gonna have uh, the number of moles in equilibrium and then after that we're gonna determine the concentration so that we can calculate uh, the kc so it is said that initially uh, we have a mass of 36 kg uh, for h2o right and then the volume is equals to uh, two decimeter cube we know that uh, the number of moles is given by the mass divided by uh, the molar mass the mass is 36 and then the molar mass for h2o is 18 so what is 36 divided by 18 uh, that is two moles so initially uh, we have let me change the color so that it's more visible so initially we have two moles of h2o and then uh, we have zero moles of h2 and then we have zero moles of co2 and then it is said that uh, the amount of co2 at equilibrium is 0 uh, 0.225 right so that means that the change was, was also 0 0.225 and then for h2 um we can determine that by the use it by using uh, the balancing coefficients right so we're gonna see the number of moles of h2 divided by the number of moles of co2 equals to the balancing coefficient of h2 which is 2 and then the balancing coefficient of co2 which is 1. so basically you multiply the number of moles of co2 by 2 and that will give us a uh, zero point four five and then um the same is true for h2o because the balancing coefficient is two right uh, just like in h2 but then instead of adding for h2o we're going to subtract right uh, 0 0.45 because at that instant uh, the reaction that was being favored is the forward reaction right uh, if it was vice versa then we're gonna add on h2o and uh, subtract on co2 and h2 so uh, here we're gonna have 0 0.45 because we're adding 0 0.45 and 0 and then for h2o we're subtracting uh, 0 0.45 from 2 and that will give us 1.55 and then the concentration at equilibrium we know that the con we know that the volume is 2 right so we're just gonna divide 1.55 by 2 and that will give us 0 0.775 we divided 0 0.45 by 2 
it gives us 0 0.225 and then 0 0.225 by 2 and uh, that is going to give us 0 0.1125 and then the question would be why am i not putting anything for uh, the carbon right the carbon is a solid and in chemical equilibrium we are only interested in um, in gaseous and aqueous solutions right we don't regard um, solids so now we can write our equation we can say that uh, kc is equals to the products right uh, divided by the reactants so what's the products we know that we have uh, h2 h2 and then we're supposed to square it why are we squaring it we're squaring it because it has a balancing coefficient of two and then uh, we have a co2 and then uh, the reactants the reactants uh, we're gonna have h2o and then we also square it because uh, it has a balancing coefficient of two and then we don't regard the carbon because like i've said it's a solid so we can go ahead and substitute those concentrations so for h2 uh, we have 0 0.225 so we're gonna have a 0 0.225 uh, squared multiplied by the concentration of co2 the concentration of co2 is 0 0.1125 so we're gonna have 0 0.1125 and then divided by the concentration of co2 of h2o which is 0 0.775 and then we square it after we square it, we can then put it in a calculator and uh, we have determined our KC. And that is 0 0.009482. And then we don't have any SI unit for uh, KC. So now we can move forward. Uh, we have 6.3, 6.3.1. Uh, then it says the graph shows how the rates of uh, the forward and reverse reactions change with time. These are like uh, the really interesting equations. And then 6.3.1 says, give a reason why the rate of forward reaction decreases between uh, T0 and T1. The rate of the forward reaction is decreasing because uh, the reactants are getting used up, right? So we have reactants are getting used up and then 6.3.2 says what change was made to the equilibrium mixture at t3 if both a forward reaction and reverse reaction are favored they all go up at the same time then uh, a catalyst was added right so they added a catalyst that is the only way uh, both uh, forward and reverse reaction can be favored at the same time 6.3.3 says is the forward reaction exothermic or endothermic you can see that at t2 forward reaction shoots up right it goes up dramatically and then it eventually starts going down because the reactants are starting to get used up so at t2 the forward reaction is favored by the increase in temperature and we know that an increase in temperature only favors endothermic reaction so we're gonna say 6.3.3 the forward reaction is endothermic why are we saying it's endothermic we're saying it's endothermic because it was favored by an increase in temperature and that's only true for an endothermic reaction and then uh, 6.3.4 says refer to the catalyst principle to explain the answer to 6.3.3 that's what we just explained the forward reaction is favored and an increase in temperature only favors an endothermic reaction